Hey guys, Shelby Smith with Jiminy Crickets. Today I am going to talk to you about what we use as a heat source here in the Cricket Castle. What we use year round as our consistent and reliable heat source. I'll also talk to you about what my growers use. We don't all use the same heat source. Each of my growers has a little bit of a different setup and they have chosen to go different routes on different heating methods. So I'll talk to you about the ones that we have in our network and then I will also sort of brainstorm some ideas and some different setups if you don't have a space like this to be able to devote completely to raising and keeping your crickets. Maybe you're on a smaller scale, you're just raising them for your pet and you need to figure out a good way to keep your crickets warm enough to keep them happy and thriving. So we'll talk about a few options on that as well. So believe it or not, we heat this entire space with three of these little um, space heaters. I call these milk house heaters, space heater, whatever. I bought them at Walmart. I am not entirely certain what the brand name is, but usually in the spring, if you go to Walmart, you can get these kinds of heaters on clearance, which is what I do. So I think I got this one, there's one down there, and there's one right there. So I got all three of these, I believe, on clearance for $10 each, and then I got a whole bunch more of them. So in the event that they go out, which they do on occasion, or you know, something goes wrong, I have extra ones waiting in the wings. So like I said, I usually do it every spring season as space heater season wears down. But so we have three of these. In the summer, we only need two. So I usually have the front one or the back one and the front one during the summer and we let this third one go. But during the winter, we need some additional supplemental heat. So the really key and important thing is that this heater does not plug directly into the wall. So if you go a little closer here, you'll see it is plugged into a pigtail and that pigtail leads up to this thermostat. So this thermostat right here, we have them, each of the heaters is plugged into its own specific thermostat. So this is a heater thermostat and we set them to 30 degrees Celsius, which is roughly you know, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. And so basically the way this functions, this guy right here is your little air thermometer or whatever. Once the uh, temperature dips below this 30 Celsius, the thermostat kicks on essentially the power to the heater, which then turns the heater on. So as long as we are at that temperature that we have it set at, this heater remains off. So it works pretty well, I believe. So these are from QC Supply, which is, I believe they're out of Nebraska. Yep, Schuyler, Nebraska. I think that's how you say that. So Schuyler, Nebraska is where you get these. I'm sure you can find some on Amazon or wherever you are. You should be able to find some sort of a thermostat with some sort of a pigtail setup for this. So all in between my electric heater and my thermostat, if my thermostat, like I said, I think they were like $60 when I bought them, and those are 10, so each of my heaters is $70. So that means with three of these in here in the winter, um, you know, my total heater setup cost is somewhere around $210, give or take. If you wanna add in the extras that I have laying around, you can. Um, but it's a pretty cheap, pretty effective and efficient way for us to heat this whole thing. This whole barn is very well insulated, which is why we can heat this whole thing with those three little heaters, even when it's really, really cold. So that's the way we have it set up for heat, but I will talk to you about some of the ways that our growers do it. So while there is some use of electric heaters like ours, in our grower network. The other two that you commonly see are natural gas, like furnaces that you, people will often get for their garages. They tend to hang, they look like a big box with a vent thing. 
Um, so those work as well. And then the other one that uh, one of our growers uses is our um, either natural gas or uh, propane radiant heaters. So again, they are they're fueled by natural gas or propane, but they're radiant heaters, so they're hung on the ceiling and they radiate the heat down. So there's advantages and drawbacks to all different kinds of heat sources and the way things are mounted and all of that kind of thing. In my mind, ideally, your heat should be coming from the ground, from the floor, because heat rises. So uh, that's why ours work really well with the electric heaters sitting on the floor. Um, you could run a fan system to take care of the heat coming from above, which that is what our growers who have those, that's typically what they do to deal with it. Um, but any of those would work. So anything that is a forced air heater or a radiant heater or an electric heater. There are lots of different options. You could even figure out some sort of like a wood burning uh, sort of a situation. There are people who do wood burning furnaces like in their houses and things like that. There's no reason you couldn't do that for this. Uh, obviously if you could get some way to capture solar power and do things like that to generate electricity and then run the heaters that would be cool too but uh, the reality of it is you do especially here in northern latitudes have to figure out what you want to use for heat what's the most efficient uh, I will tell you right now as it stands in February of 2020 I'm really glad that we have electric heaters because the price of natural gas has gone through the roof this winter so uh, in my processing facility like my utility bills have gone up massively just because of the natural gas portion so I'm thankful that I didn't have to endure that here in the barn because we are all electric which is neat it also gives us other opportunities you know moving forward like I said if we looked at doing solar or wind or something like that um, because it is all electric it's a little easier to you know use something like that so that's what we use that's what our growers use but let's say like i talked about in the beginning that you don't have a room that you can necessarily devote to specifically heat what can you do uh, the things that i've commonly seen are things like heat lamps uh, some of you are lucky and have a room actually completely devoted to your reptile and so most reptiles need to be kept warm so you can probably keep the crickets in the same room so that's wonderful uh, but otherwise things like heating pads would work uh, heat lamps even if you can just devote a closet maybe in your house to keeping it warmer things like that um, the, the thing to be mindful of is though is uh, if you're using a heating pad or a heating lamp just make sure that you are not like cooking a portion of the crickets because you are you know getting the lamp too close or the heating pad is getting the bottom too hot uh, just be aware of those signs of stress like your crickets are dying and cooking <laughs> um, that would be the only drawbacks I would see of certain situations like that also the other thing that you could possibly look into if you don't have like an actual built room that you could necessarily devote to growing them check out things like ice fish ice fishing houses so those tend to be pretty small like they tend to be pop-up they're usually some sort of a fabric and they might have some sort of like foil looking lining in in the inside um, but those are meant to have a heater in them because theoretically you're sitting there I'll never understand ice fishers but whatever um, so theoretically you're sitting in this little hut on the pond or on the lake or whatever you're sitting on uh, and you're keeping that area warm that inside warm while you're sitting there trying to catch fish through ice like I said not my thing but I do know they exist so something like that if you're on a small scale that might work well if you can't or don't want to devote a room to your raising of your feeder insects. I don't know. It's it's not a situation that I necessarily have to deal with, but I do know that some of you folks that are doing things on a smaller scale, like I said, that are using them for personal use or pet use, uh, that hopefully is helpful to sort of think through those different options.
And that's all I have for you guys today. It was a short one and a sweet one, just talking about what we use for heat. It's a question that I get fairly often, so I thought I would share. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments below and I will get some as soon as I can. Thank you so much for being here and until next time, I will see you later. Oh wait, totally forgot. Please don't forget, like, subscribe, share, all of those things. Really helps me out. Okay, actually, see you this time.